What do you think about the advice, write the script or make the movie you want to watch? Look, I mean, I think uh, I wrote the books I wanted to exist when I was younger. Like, it's, I think there is something important to um, be able to uh, uh, express what it is you're trying to say. I think that's absolutely critical. Um, but I would, and, and I have no problem, like, I, I don't want writers to think like they should only write these genres and that they should forever turn their back on any passion project they have. Like their passion is what got them into wanting to do this in the first place. They should absolutely follow that uh, uh, at every step of their career. But what I'm saying is utilize these core genres that, that do work, that are in need, and apply what story you want to tell within it. Like these characters, whether it's a tween girl romance, whether it's a female driven thriller, whether it's a Christmas movie, like they, even the creature features, like they, there are real stories and real moments in there that are 100% purely human interactions, human conflict, human struggles uh, and challenges that we can all identify with. Um, you know, there's a lot of kind of stereotypical, you would expect, sci-fi movies that actually have these very powerful messages in them about how we operate as, as humans. You can say that about zombie movies, what it really reveals about who we are. And I think that they probably, or, or a tween girl movie, what, what it sort of tells about whether you're male or female, like what, what that feels like early in your life when you're stumbling through this transition of childhood to adulthood. And it's not just sex and puberty, it's, it's all of the responsibilities that get thrust on you and balancing how you grew up versus what your personal experiences of the world are and, and all of that. And it's like you can funnel that into something really fun and TV safe and Disney-esque and still be very, you know, powerful in what you're trying to communicate. So I don't think that they should dismiss it. I think they should utilize them. Right. Let's let's say eighth grade. Did you see that film? I, I didn't. Okay. I didn't okay. okay. So there were probably things that wouldn't maybe be advertiser friendly for TV. I loved it. I know there was a gentleman that walked out of the theater when I was watching and I was surprised. But it sounds like for what you're talking about is these are working writers. These are people that they probably pay their rent, pay their car bill, whatever, through writing. Yeah. And if you want to have a career, you can you know, write the next Precious, which is amazing, but that's also very hard to get made. And so these are things that, that are consistent. There's a, there's a formula to them and they work. People, people watch them. Yeah, and, and I would add to that, like if you want to have those moments of being a staff writer on a series, if you want to have those moments of like that passion project you want to see made, you need help to do it, and you need a track record to do it, and you need relationships to make that happen. So building a career, showcasing you can do the work, you've done it consistently, you can be dependable, you deliver what you say you're gonna do time and time and time again, and you've showcased, like, my stuff makes you money. Um, you're getting obviously paid for it in exchange, but like my stuff makes this company money. I'm delivering the goods. Let's elevate the relationship. Uh, every, every person I know who's become a director did it by working through the ranks and proving they could do the work before they actually got the job. Every writer I've ever met proved they could write before they got the job. And if you wanna see your passion project made, you kinda of have to showcase I get how the industry works. I'm totally in on it I, in terms of you know, assisting and playing my role and my part in making that system operate. And now it's my turn to really put something forward and take that first big leap. You need help to do it. It's not, I mean, there's always outliers. I'm sure, I'm sure you know, there's, there's a couple of you know, pop-up titles sporadically here and there that launched careers. But for the most part, these overnight you know, success stories are like 10, 15 years of like hard, dedicated work that finally just crisscrossed into the big opportunity. The Boondock Saints. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be one of the, yeah. those stories. And in truth, that time period, that time era was very, very, very different. And that was still when film was the thing and theater was still what it was and it wasn't being utilized quite the same way it was today. And uh, you know some of the personalities <laughs> picking that movie up, or you know, they're 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 how they are viewed in history is very different in today's world. 
Um, so a lot has changed since then. And I, I don't, I think it's really critical not to hold yourself or judge yourself on how other people built their careers or what milestones they hit and by what age and when. Uh, because you're gonna, first off, you're gonna drive yourself nuts and make yourself depressed. And they were operating in time periods and they had a series of opportunities before them that are just different. You gotta work with the ones that are before you. But I think that if you wanna get your passion projects made, keep them going, keep them in your back pocket. And it's important for writers to be able to like move from this project to that project so that they're not getting too involved and being able to stay fresh on them. Uh, but yeah, if you have that consistent work pattern and you're getting regular deals, you're not selling out, you're being professional and you'll get those opportunities for your own projects too. Sure, and just as distribution has changed and, and how we view things, sounds like how you get your projects out there. When you said you read Sid Field's screenplay, excellent advice, and then the last chapter, maybe that's, and, and I don't want to speak out of school here, but maybe it's outdated at this point. In, in a sense, like I, it goes back to principles versus, you know, trends and all that. Like, yeah, I think the, the, the version of the book that I read, like suggested you still mail a hard copy with a self-addressed stamped envelope and all that stuff. It's like, our time is just very different today. But um, the concept of reaching out, getting it in front of people, speaking, learning how to speak about your project, learning to speak with confidence, which is a skill in and of itself. And it's one that many people struggle with. And it's okay, there, there's, there's no shortage of videos on YouTube to like learn how to better present yourself. But the truth is you just gotta get out there. You gotta get your hands dirty. You, you, you gotta get your boots on the ground and, and sort of make the opportunities happen. When pitching, should a writer speak 100% about the story or should they also talk about the business viability of the project? I think both. I think um, that's really at the end of the day what it is. It's a, it's a creative project that answers a business problem. And I think screenwriters do need to view what they're presenting as a business case in addition to a story. Story is critical and um, what happens in that story, how it is presented, how it unfolds. Again, even in these like core genres that you think are overly cliched. It's like there's a lot of story development and the number of hours I've been on the phone or a Zoom talking about one project that's just a, a, a Christmas story. Like it's, it's, um, it's quite intense. Uh, but yeah, it's so story is critical, but it being able to answer the problems of the platform or the network is also critical. So when we have those usually starts in this kind of like process where it's first I'm working with a writer and I'm working with a network or VOD platform separately. I get the deal opportunity closed. Then we get that script mapped out, written, contracted, etc. Then we get everybody in the room together and have that big creative conversation. And uh, yeah, during that process, it's we're pitching the script, but we're also pitching it as a business case and why it's going to make that company money or why it's going to bring in audience or what things does it need to have in it that are going to help them grow their, grow their company, grow their audience base or um, you know, increase revenues. And when you're on a phone call back and forth about a project for many months, is it is it story driven that you're that you're discuss? Is it story based that you're discussing issues, or is it location, all of the above? It's all of the above. I, I mean, story, you know, is the big filter. It's got to work. The theme has to work. Uh, the character has to follow the right journey. Um, but how that happens? Yeah, we 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 do dive a lot into the the tangible, uh, uh, I guess, technicality of how are we actually gonna execute this thing? Because it's not just words on the paper. You're gonna have to have a crew behind the camera. So if that conversation is taking place in a car while it's driving, why? Like, just put it on a bench, you know, put it someplace that's easy to shoot. Um, uh, the number of characters. And there's, you know, I, I just had a conversation with a writer um, few days ago and she was very specific about wanting a character in a scene with no dialogue um, because story-wise she felt it was very important and I'm 
sort of in this situation of sort of explaining, yeah, but we got to pay all this extra money for them to be on set for that one day and they may not need to be there. And it does, there is a kind of a balance in terms of like cost, economics, commerce versus the creative storytelling. Uh, budgets are tight on a lot of productions and so you have to balance that. So it, it's, it's a big hybrid. And it's usually, you're talking both at the same time on specific points. But story opens the door and I would say the, the, um, the details of the execution, the business case, are what close the deal.